Hello everybody and welcome to this series of e-learning lectures designed to help you build competencies in English for specific purposes. This is lecture number 4. Needs Analysis in ESP. Part 2. ESP Syllabus Design. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to determine the specifications of what is to be included in an ESP course. But, before we move forward, if you have not been here before then welcome to the Univ English channel. If you do like videos like this, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and also smash the notification bell to receive notifications of when I produce more videos like this. Also, let me know down the comments what are the difficulties you are facing right now. So, I can use your ideas for future videos. Introduction Needs analysis is a process used to determine the what and the how of a course. It is the first step in ESP course development, followed by Syllabus design Materials choice Methodology Assessment, and evaluation. However, these stages cannot be viewed as separate segments, moving in a linear fashion. Rather, they are interdependent overlapping activities within a continuous process as outlined by Dudley Evans and St. John, 1998. This conceptual distinction is perfectly encapsulated by the following diagrams as proposed by Dudley, Evans and St. John, 1998, 121, illustrating how needs analysis is usually ongoing, feeding back into different stages. Highland, 2006, 73, offers a broad, multi-layered definition of needs analysis. He claims that needs analysis refers to the techniques for collecting and assessing information relevant to course design, it is the means of establishing the how and what of a course. It is a continuous process, since we modify our teaching as we come to learn more about our students, and in this way it actually shades into evaluation, the means of establishing the effectiveness of a course. Needs is actually an umbrella term that embraces many aspects, incorporating learners' goals and backgrounds, their language proficiencies, their reasons for taking the course, their teaching and learning preferences, and the situations they will need to communicate in. Needs can involve what learners know, don't know or want to know, and can be collected and analyzed in a variety of ways. Nature and Role of Needs Analysis Needs analysis entered the literature on ESP in the 1970s and during that decade it was largely defined in terms of the target situation analysis, TSA, that is, what foreign language learners are required to do with their second language in the target situation. West, 1994, points out, needs analyses have a basis, either explicitly or implicitly, in theory, McDonough 1984, and also in principle, the type of information sought during a needs analysis is usually closely related to the approach to teaching and learning and to syllabus design followed by the analysts Robinson, 1991, 11-12. Rich Terich, and Chancerl, 1997, put a specific importance on present situation analysis, PSA. A present situation analysis draws attention to the disparity between what participant learners are able to do with language in the early stages of the course and what they need to do at the end of the course. This is frequently referred to as their lacks. The present situation analysis also covers other factors pertaining to the prevailing situation, including one individual data about the learners, factors which may impact the way they learn such as prior learning experiences, cultural information, motivations for attending the course and expectations of it and attitude to English, to information about the language teaching environment, for example resources, administration matters. Syllabus for ESP course. Syllabi are the specification of what is to be included in a language course, they act as a guide for both teacher and learner by providing the goals to be attained. Hutchinson and Waters, 1987, 80, define syllabus as a document which says what will, or at least what should, be learned. For Robinson, 1991, 34, it is a plan of work and is thus essentially for the teacher, as a guideline and context of class content. These statements indicate that the syllabus first concerns the teacher, and that it helps her slash him plan courses. 
The aim of ESP courses is to equip learners with a certain English proficiency level for a situation where the language is going to be used, i.e., target needs. It is agreed that any decision made in designing language teaching programs in ESP context should hinge on the learner's needs for learning English. Therefore, the ESP syllabus content should be carefully justified in terms of relevance and motivational potential for the learners. Even there are various types of syllabus known, each of which has four main components. Objectives. Method or methodology. Materials. And evaluation. Characteristics of a syllabus. In order to specify what language will be taught and how to teach, Barschkman, 2006 21 affords a perspective on syllabus through a set of attributes and items typically listed and referred to as the syllabus. 1 consists of a comprehensive list of content items, for example, words, structures, topics, and process items, tasks, methods. 2. Is ordered, easier and more essential items first. 3. Has explicit objectives, usually expressed in the introduction. 4. Is a public document. 5. May indicate a time schedule. 6 may indicate preferred methodology or approach. And 7, may recommend materials. Besides the four components, a syllabus designer may include other relevant information such as course policy, weekly schedule, assignment, as well as course identity and course description. White, 1988, classifies language syllabus types into content-based, skills-based, and method-based syllabi the first two being represented by the proportional paradigm, and the latter by the process paradigm as shown in the following figure White, 1988, 46. Robinson, 1991-35, explains that one significant issue in ESP is the relationship in any syllabus of language, pedagogy and content, that is, the student's specialist area. According to Bayes Turkman, 2006, 21, Syllabuses can be synthetic in which the language is segmented into discrete linguistic items for presentation one at a time, or analytic wherein language is presented whole chunks at a time without linguistic control. The figure illustrates that the synthetic syllabus contains the traditional approaches to syllabuses as the grammatical, the lexical, the functional notional, the situational and topical ones. The analytic one includes the task-based, the learner-centered and content-based syllabi which are considered as modern approaches in language teaching methodologies. Each one of them is based on a specific conceptual teaching philosophy and not all of them gain specific popular status, hence we deal only with the most known and mostly used. The synthetic syllabi. The synthetic syllabi rely on learners, assumed, ability to learn a language in parts independently of one another, and also to integrate, or synthesize the pieces when the time comes to use them for communicative purposes. Long and Crooks, 1993, 12. The teaching and learning process is based on providing the different language forms and structures separately. In this type of syllabus acquisition is a process of gradual accumulation of independently taught parts, building up to the whole structure of the language. The analytic syllabi. The analytic syllabi rely on the learner's ability to induce and infer language rules, as well as on innate knowledge of linguistic universals. Long and Crooks, 1993, 11. So, analytic syllabi are based on learners' personal capacities and aptitudes to produce the different grammatical structures and forms. Analytic syllabuses represent the L2, without linguistic interference or control, and rely on the learner's ability to induce and infer language rules, as well as on innate knowledge of linguistic universals. Things to consider in designing a syllabus. A syllabus requires that the target objectives, and language that the learner will be expected to master, must be broken down into an optionally sequenced series of teaching and learning points. 1. The students. Age, language proficiency, level of competence, goals, interests, contributions. 2. The task. Communication tasks, language skills. 3. The text. 4. External constraints. 
time, resources, terminal exams, expectations. Conclusion Due to its deep and complex role, it is a challenging task for educators to devise an ESP syllabus, however, it seems to serve to align with the required standards since it is a multi-purposed entity. Thus, ESP syllabus designers should remember the various tasks the syllabus performs so that it can be structured and exploited most appropriately. In the ESP, the character of the content is extracted from real-world situations during which the syllabus designers need to select the foremost relevant language discourses which will supply for learners' target requirements.